What yeah. about when you did find out you were pregnant with the twins? <gasps> What I still feel like hot and sweaty and palpitations oh God, even thinking I about it. I screamed. Did I tell you I screamed? No. Like, far out. I was in shock and scared and just yelped. Is this when you knew that it was twins or when you just saw a positive stick? No, when I found out it was twins. Yeah, when I saw the positive stick, I was like, wow, that came up really dark and really fast. Right. And I swear we only had sex like a few days ago. That is really strong. That is really wow. weird. Wow, yes. Because usually when I pee on a stick, it takes ages for the line to come up. Right. The, with Billy and Oscar. With, I think with both of them, or definitely with Billy, I'd thrown it in the bin. Right, And then really? I walked past the bin like a couple of hours later. And oh, there was there. something that just went, go have a look at that test. I went and looked at it and I was like, is that a, is that a second line? Oh, I took a photo, sent it to my sister. I'm like, what do you think? Is that a line? She's like, nah, I don't reckon when oh, I did wow. my test. And it was so faint, the faintest, faintest line, but every time. And I'm like, right. that's, that's a line yeah. every time. Um, so did you kind of have an inkling when the line was that strong? It was so dark. And because it, it was my girlfriend's hen's day and I just had this inkling. I get these weird, like, I don't know psychic thoughts or something that right. I just get urges to do things that I wouldn't usually like go into the bin and pull that pregnancy test out you need yeah, to look at yeah, it again yeah yeah so it's my girlfriend's hands and um I just had this inkling it was like I think it was a week before my period was even due so the tests can't even right. pick up aren't even sensitive enough to pick up that you're pregnant no and they I think they can pick up the earliest detection ones and maybe four days before your period's due this was like seven days before but I had this feeling do a test do a test I did the test bang second line came up before the control line wow. the, preg the your pregnant line came up first oh my god so usually the control line comes up then you wait and then the second line oh appears. my god came up straight away and I was like ah shit <laughs> but I remember I wrote um, number three in like a Sharpie on it and took a photo and sent it to my <gasps> sister and my mum. And um, I've still got that and I, it's in the bathroom on a shelf like in the cupboard and every now and again I see it and I have a little giggle to myself because oh. I'm like, number three, hey? Oh, no. uh, but how funny is that? So that test for twins picks it up wow. straight away. Well, because you would have so much more of hormones. all the hormones yeah. in your body. Yeah. yeah, and it's like I just knew. Um, and, then, and then I felt so rotten and I never felt rotten with the other two. Um, and I went and saw my, oh, really late, because then we went off to South Africa for a friend's wedding, um, and we went to Dubai, and we were on holidays, and by the time I got back to see my, oh, but I think I was about eight weeks, and I'd been so sick, oh. and I was never sick with the others, right. and I kept saying to Chris, there's, I reckon this could be twins, this oh really God. could be twins. So we went in and saw Len, and um, he did the scan, and he only saw one because one was hiding behind the other, and he said to me, how are you feeling? And I said, oh, really, um really sick he goes shit that's unlike you maybe there's mm. two in there and I was like that's what I was thinking oh my goodness what if there's two and uh so yeah we did this the ultrasound I've got the picture and that, just one just one and so yeah. you went home and then how and did and you still felt rotten and then it wasn't till I went back I think it was 10 weeks or 11 weeks oh wow and yeah he was scanning me and there was a there was a little blob at the top and I thought oh gee that placenta is quite big for this early on and I just said to him, he, and he had this really funny little smirk on his face. Like he was, it was kind of like, mm, I don't know. I can't even replicate it, but it was like this mischievous kind of yeah, right. smirk. Oh. And I said, what, what is that? What's that blob thing? And as I said that, he put the ultrasound on the blob and changed the angle and it materialised into a little baby kicking. Oh my God. And that's when I screamed. Oh my gosh. I heart palpitations, sweating, wow. screaming, oh my God, couldn't talk, could not talk. When I get excited about something or scared about something or want to blurt something out, I just, yeah, nothing right, comes out. Right. Um, so I screamed and that was it. And then somehow I blurted out after that, you better call my husband because last oh, he time. he wasn't there? Chris wasn't there because it was like our pregnancy. It's like got, Chris came you. to the first, it always comes to the first scan. Yeah. And then all the other scans. Yeah, scan. of course. Yeah, 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 same, yeah. So I said last time there was only one. You better you better call him and tell him. Um, <gasps> and what did Chris say? And I couldn't even I couldn't talk, so Len called him, and um, all I could hear was f bombs oh! on the phone. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Yep. Wow. It's crazy. And then I walked out and I saw midwife Kath. She had this look on her face. Like, is everything okay? I think she thought I'd miscarried or something. Right. Um, and all the the midwives in so all of Len's staff are all midwives. All the midwives in the um, in the staff area 
we were all kind of looking at me like, what's going on? And I looked at Kath and I was like, twins. And she was just like, fuck, fuck. Oh, And I'm like, wow. fuck. And there were just F-bombs flying left, right and centre. And then, because um, Oscar was a really, had bad reflux and Billy didn't. Right. And Kath like the reflux queen. Right, um, right. At diagnosing and treating and, um, and, you know, little tips along the way. And she goes, if they're twin boys... Reflux, baby. No, I said it to her. I'm like, what if they're twin boys? What if they both have reflux? And we just kind of looked at each other and we're like, oh, God. And then a couple of weeks later, we did the scan where we found out that they were, in fact, identical twin boys. boys. <laughs> we, oh, my God. Oh, no, so were you the worried? Reflux babies, I was so worried. Because I didn't have reflux babies, but it's a oh. really different ball game. Yeah, it is. It, it was so hard with Oscar. And being your first baby as well, you don't know no. what you're doing. No. You've got this screaming baby. And every time I put him on the boob, he'd be pulling away and screaming like my breast milk was poisoning him um and i thought far out can you imagine twins yeah with reflux yeah um but thank god they 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 didn't didn't. oh yeah and you're lucky they've just you know like after they were born it's you just couldn't be more in love with them which obviously you would be but it's kind of like it's imagine them not here i know i couldn't yeah i feel so lucky and my entire pregnancy i felt um, like anxious, scared, and I, th- I think based on people's reactions, I was kind of dreading having twins. And I yeah. thought, oh, gosh, w- you know, why me? What's going on here? Mm. What did I do to deserve twins? And I think it was because everyone's reaction was, what, twins? Yeah. Ugh. Well, oh, that's God. awful, isn't it? And I remember some one of Chris's friends said, when Chris told him, said, oh, I know this is where I'm supposed to say, Awesome, congratulations. But mate, I'm just gonna be honest, what an effing disaster. <gasps> yeah. <laughs> what an effing disaster. So I had all these people telling me what a disaster wow. it was. So my entire pregnancy, and because it was so high risk and stressful, I was thinking, this is gonna be a disaster. But I should have just listened to the twin mums, because I know a lot of mm. not a lot, but there's a few um twin mums who I know who said, It's great. Trust yeah. us, it's great. Like, it's hard, but it's great. Yeah. But you know when, it's like when people give you compliments, you don't remember the compliments, you remember the negative comments. Totally, yeah. And so I remembered the thousands of people that said, poor you, and not the four women that said it's actually the best thing that will ever happen yeah, to you. Yeah, yeah. Um, and also, I don't know if you were like this um, with your babes, but I felt when I was about to give birth to Billy, I kind of thought, oh, how am I going to find any more love? My cup yes. is full. Yep. Yeah. But as soon as she came out, it was just instant. Was but then it? with was the twins, instant? I thought, okay, my cup is like really, yeah. really full right now. And I've been dreading, dreading them coming. And I don't know how I'm going to cope with twins. And I just, I, I've, I, I don't think I've got any love left. Yeah. And as soon as they came out, it was so instant and oh. so awesome. And it was completely different to how I felt when Oscar came out, where I was, I was like, oh, take him. Yeah. Take yeah. him. I don't know what I'm doing. This yeah. is too much. <laughs> I'm, I'm not really feeling this kid. So, like, put yeah. him back up there. Yeah. Um, whereas with the twins, it was, you know, I actually got that moment that they talk about where it's pure love <gasps> and you feel the, you hear the music and the, oh, the lights. Really? And I got that with them. Wow. Um, which I, and I know we've spoken about this before, but, um, I didn't. I didn't have that with Oscar, and I know you didn't. have No, that. I didn't have it with either of yeah, my boys. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. So, um, which was great with the twins. So it was just, just instant. That would be. Love. You know what? There's something that was bigger goodness. at play there that was like, these boys need you to feel instant love. Cause yeah, because maybe unsure. the universe sensed that I was so unsure yeah. and so a bit shaky about it. And then did it they make came... you feel guilty that that whole pregnancy you had? Oh been... yeah. Yeah, I bet it yeah, would. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. and I've I kind of. I've spoken to the twin mums about it and they said they're exactly the same. Of course you would yeah. be. Because it is, it's scary and unknown. Well, one baby is so, so hard, hard and I thought I'm not going to be able to cope with two. Is it double as hard? Do you think <laughs> it is? It's easier. What? Yeah, it is actually easier. And I know people are going to be like, what? That is bullshit. But it is true. And I, But I, A, I think I got really good twins yeah. um, and they're, they're not refluxy and they're, they're happy, healthy little boys. Um, but, and also they're my third and fourth. So yeah. I'm kind of, um, they just raise themselves. They just, I, I really know what I'm doing and I've got more really good maternal instincts with them. Yeah. Whereas with Oscar, it was like, oh, I don't know totally, what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, so they settle each other. So they sleep in the same room, separate cots. But you know, when you've got one baby, 
you put them down to sleep, you close the door, you walk out and they go, ah! because yeah. they get that separation anxiety. They want mum and dad to come back in and pick them up and rock them to sleep. Yeah. Um, so I had that with Billy and Oscar. With the twins, I put them down, I closed the door and they just talk to each <gasps> other and they put themselves to sleep. Oh no God. problems, no mm. probs. It's incredible. When they wake up, so um, kind of looking after Billy and Oscar, I've got the twins on their play mat. They just stay there and play with each other. They've got their toys and they talk in twin talk to each oh other. Oh, my ooh, God. Ooh, ooh. Uh, 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 uh. This is oh. them. And they're there for an hour, an hour and a half, playing with each other. Oh, my God. Could you imagine oh a single God. baby being able to no. let them play by themselves for that? There, there is no <gasps> way. So the twins, they entertain each other. And then sometimes I'll go, you know, I want my cuddles with my boys. I'll pick them up for a cuddle. And they're kind of just looking for each other. Like, oh, Mom. my God. They are like <gasps> this. And when they're there on the rug and they're in that really kicking, punching phase, yeah. they kick each other and they punch each other and they just cop it. I saw Darcy the other day. He's like, uh, uh. And Tom's just there like, uh, <laughs> getting booted in the head. And I kind of looking at him thinking, if that was Billy or Oscar as a yeah. baby, they'd be wild about it. Yeah. But I think because they were in utero kicking each other in the head from the, the very beginning, just getting booted in the head. They, if, if they're athletic in any way, they're going to be the best football players oh. and so tough because they're just used to people jumping yes. all over them. So they entertain each other. So for that reason, I, I can say with confidence that at this point in time, and they're not crawling yet. Yeah. So that'll oh, be a different kettle of fish. God. But at this point in time, they have been my easiest babies yet. And two is easier than one. I think everyone assumes that you have a shitload of help. But you are a very hands-on mum. Mm. As somebody that works with you and knows you're very strict with what work you do and don't do. So you can yeah. be with the kids. Yeah. But your mum um, has moved in with you guys yeah. to help out as well. Best thing ever. Oh, my God. I couldn't imagine anything better. Oh, it's the best. Mums yeah. are just the best. So... She's moved in, so she um, looks after the kids Monday to Thursday. Yeah. Yeah. But then awesome. having said that, so we do pick up Monday afternoon. So Monday morning, I'm around. Tuesday's one of my floater days. Um, so sometimes I'm working, sometimes I'm at home. Wednesday's always postcards day for Channel yep. 9. And then Thursday's a floater day as well. So um, I'm kind of, I'm there. In I'm in and out. And Tuesday's and Thursdays. And from home as well? He's. Yeah, every now and again. He's got right. an office um, that he goes to, but he do, can do a lot at home as well. He does bits and pieces. So he does a bit of media, a um, bit of writing, a bit of radio. Um, Jagged, our apparel brand, yep. works in there. He's the um, director of football at Carlton. He's like, Far out. He, we had this conversation. He goes, I kind of need a business card, but what would I put on it? Yeah. Like, mm, bit of everything. I don't know. Just, I said, you don't need a title, babe. Just, you're just the Judd man. It's all good. Yeah, the Judd man. <laughs> just have um, that. Yeah. So I've got, yeah, I've got mum at home and then, um, how does that work though? Does she have her own part of the house? Yeah. She's downstairs. Okay. Good. Yeah. She's got her own bathroom and her own bedroom. And Perfect. so she can kind of retreat down there and she's yeah. very good. The day she's um, not with us. So, um, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, she's out of the house. Because if she stays at home, she ends up doing helping. Stuff. Yeah. So she, it's been great for her. So Friday, Saturday, Sunday, she's hiking. She's at bloody every rooftop bar in Melbourne. If you want to know what's cool, actually, she could be a good research assistant for postcards. Yeah, right. Um, every rooftop bar, restaurant, new thing happening, exhibition, awesome. she is there. So it's really um, encouraged her to get out of the house. Otherwise, she'll be at home changing shitty yeah. nappies and... and you know, well, because she moved from stuff. Perth too, and her job was pretty. She was a flying at, at the fly mine. Fly out miner, yeah. So, what did her, what was her job there? What she, would she do? Oh, she looked after um, the kitchen for ten thousand, I think ten thousand staff. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah. So, so this they, would be all, like a cruisy job for her now, almost. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll tell you, you said that actually. Oh my Mom, god! You've got a good now. <laughs> yes, yeah, seriously. Um, yeah, oh. she had a really tough job. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, like physically demanding. Yeah. yeah. So, so yeah, I've got her Monday to Thursday. She's downstairs. A lot of people say, oh, how does that go with your husband and like having your mum there? And what does Chris feel about that? They get along so well. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, she, if she's had enough or if we've had enough, we, there's plenty of space in a house where we can kind of give each other some space. Yeah. Yeah. yeah oh, but it's been so, so good. Nice, and the best though. thing is just being able to spend time with your grandkids for her and vice versa. Um, and when we go out, you know, if we want to go out to dinner or have a date night, 
just knowing that we're leaving the kids with a family with, member, yeah. with my mum, yeah. who's best mum ever. Yeah, and you legitimately, like, she loves your kids. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So that would be such a nice feeling that yeah. because you have to go away for a bit for work and stuff, that mm. would ease yeah, and she'll protect them as much too. as I totally. do. Totally. Yeah. yeah. You and Kate are pretty close, aren't you, your yeah. sister? Yeah, as close as we can be living in separate Different cities. states. Yeah, because Billy's yeah. got Kate as her middle, middle name, name, right? Yeah. And um, so during school and high school, Kate and I used to fight so much. I think I've still got yeah. scars on my arm from, like, cat fights with my sister. Yes. We used to drive each other bananas um, and, like, really intense fighting and yeah. I hate you and I hate you too. And, yeah, my sister mm, and I And like I used to that. lock her outside of the house. I was the brain, Kate was the brawn. So she'd be the physical fighting right. and I'd just, like, lure her outside and then lock her outside and leave her outside for hours until mum got home. God. Yeah. I and still then, remember my sister chasing me around the house with a shoe that she was going to yeah. belt me with. And then I remember my friend was there and I ducked behind my friend on the couch and my friend copped the shoe. I was like, I'm oh, so sorry. Better you than me, though. <laughs> So we're, so we're close on. now, so but yeah, at times we hated each yeah, other. Same. Oh, but we loved each other, but we hated each yeah. other. Yeah, yeah. I think it's sometimes hard with girls, though. Mm. You know, I don't know if it's that extra. I don't know. And yeah. if you're just different personalities, it's hard. Yeah. And you're just forced to live together and to yeah. try. I feel so bad for my mum, though. I go, I don't know. Because when my boys fight now and it's not that full on, I'm like, oh, it's just the pits. Where yeah. I just go, mum, you had that fat until we all moved out of home. Yeah. Yeah, and mum says that. She said, you know, she can see now um, with a bit more clarity. But when you're in it and one person's saying, this person did this to me and the other person saying, no, this person did this to me. And parents are just going to have to judge based on how they're seeing it, which isn't necessarily the way it was. Totally. You know? So mum says, you know, sometimes I got it wrong. Like, Kate did do that to you. Well, you did do that. and And I got the, I made the wrong call, but... You know, you're just trying to do the best. I know. Can. I do that with my yeah. boys all the time because they are they are mm. at each other. Yeah. And, and this person my... did this. And yes. Yeah. Bax did this. And and then who do you believe? Who do you... I know. Yeah. And poor Ar- Arlo is a more diff- is more difficult than Bax. Like he's stronger. I can't discipline him. Like they're mm. so different. Where Bax, mm. I can look at him and he'll stop what he's doing. Yeah. Where Arlo Same will laugh Oscar. at me. You feel he just laughs. Ha ha. And I just feel the power yeah. going through so often, <laughs> and I feel so bad for Bax, but I'll be like, maybe can we just give that to Arlo? Yeah. Like, and the poor guys like yeah all right i give oscar the wink i'm like just yeah and he, i kind of we've got this secret little oh, you know cute. like because he's looking at me thinking mom this is so unfair yes and i'm like let, let billy just have a turn all right oh my god yeah <laughs> and billy's like Ugh, oblivious to our secret language he's like, okay he's really good at sharing and billy will go off happy and then oscar and i will have the show i'm like thank you so much oh my god this, this, is, is, this exactly is what happened in my house. you and yes. i can do this together later you yes. know she's only three she doesn't understand she's not as good at sharing she's not like you yet she will be in a couple of years she's just a little they're never kid. gonna be like them though like arlo <laughs> seriously like Bax would sit in i'd put Bax in time and arlo will get there and he'll stand up and go no and yeah. I'm like, a oh, fuck, all right, come out. I don't know what to do with you. They're so different. It was like that too. I'm like, go to your room. No. Like, go up to your room right now. No. And I have to, like, pull her up Same. the stairs. And then I think I put her in a room and I want to slam the door. But then I'm like, no, because then that's just teaching her that you just slam the I door. Know. So I put her in there. And as soon as I close the door, she tries to get out. And I'm standing. She's so bloody strong. She's like yes. an ox. And I'm standing on the other side of the door and the handle's straining. And she's like, <laughs> And I'm there, like, holding the door with my foot, like, you're not coming out. It's exactly the same as me. The only way I can get through to him, I am like, if I get him to cry, I'm happy. I know that's bad, but I'll sit him in timeout and he won't sit down. We do it in the hallway. I'm like, you're in timeout. Go into timeout and I'll sit him down there and he won't. So I hold with his shoulders so he won't get up. And then he still will get up. So I have to close the door. And if I hear him cry, I'm like, yeah, fuck you. I finally got you. Like, I love hearing the tears because I'm like, I win. I I win. You're winning. Because it's just the feeling of that losing that power is the pits. I don't even know how I win with her. No, we don't. We really don't. Yeah. You have Mm. a million zillion businesses Mm. and jobs. Mm. Let's go through a few of them Mm -hmm. and how they started. So Jagged, which is your sports apparel. Apparel, yep. So we took, um, we bought Jagged with some other people. Um, When was it? Maybe a few years ago. Yeah. And so it was more of a triathlon apparel company. Um, So did it already exist? It existed. I think it was in the US. Right, okay. Um, So we... 
took it over, rebranded, completely changed the business pretty much. Um, and it's at the stage now where we sell all around the world and we've got our flagship store and head office on Church Street in Brighton. Right. Um, and so it's cycling gear and it's also women and men's active wear. Um, and yeah, it's, it's going really well. We're doing some fun little collabs. We did a collab with Chaton and that just like yeah. flew out the door. Far out. Um, I'm going to be doing some stuff with Jagged as well because there's some things that I'm like, oh, let's do these, let's do these. So they're right. like, all right, let's just do your own range then. Everything oh, that you want. And I'm awesome. like, okay, I want high-waisted compression. Yes. Yeah. Whether you've had a baby or not, sometimes when you're doing PT or whatever and you're doing burpees, you don't want – no. You want your modesty. You don't want your bits hanging out. Yes. Or some some people just want to be a bit more covered. So do I feel higher waist more, yeah, you feel more secure. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and a few other things. Great. Um, so that's going really, really well. And Chris works on that too, right? Yeah. So he's on the board now. He's just joined the board. So before when he was still playing footy and stuff, we were co-owners and that's about it right um but yeah he's taking now that he's, role so you board, don't so you don't do your roles cross over or anything because i would think working with your partner sometimes would be no we've hard. got a great team so i don't work in the business at all yeah perfect yeah. yeah yeah but i i run my eyes across mood boards and what have we got coming in and oh, i don't like that or i do like that but they we've got such a great team we've got an amazing creative director michelle green um a great designer georgie um and just a really really good team so they they're proper staff and they work in there yeah um and uh so yeah my i'm not really involved apart from when i go oh can't we do this i oh, know how we much do this? fun though yeah. that you can go hey, this is what i want and what i know other women are going to want and you, yeah. you've got it there to do that's yeah. so exciting yeah it is it is exciting and i feel you know i listen to what people say and i know what people want yeah. so it's kind of it's good being able to go okay i hear you let's do it yeah yeah and to be able to execute on that is yes. is um a nice fulfilling feeling um so yeah it's going it's going so jagged Busters. there's jagged mm-hmm. then there's rebecca jagged loves yep so how did when did that start and how did that start so that kind of started um i think i did it when I was on mat leave with Oscar from the Alfred, so I was a speech pathologist at the Alfred. Yeah. Um, and I went on mat leave and I thought, oh, I kind of, I just, it was when blogs were just kind of starting. Yeah. And I thought, people always come and ask me, where'd you get that? What's your advice on this? And I thought, why don't I just put it all into Rebecca Judd Loves, everything that I love. Yeah, I perfect. want to share with people. Um, and it was kind of when Instagram was just starting as well. Right. Um, which was, when did Instagram it was probably Instagram. four or, four or like five years ago. End of 2011, ago. I think. And that, maybe yeah, I started right. the blog 2012, which I thought would right. be a good tie-in. Um, so I used to um, publish content every single day. So everything from wedding styling to makeup looks to fashion looks. And it was full on. Like yeah. coming out with diff- fresh content every single day. I was like, wow. Yeah. Um, and then Billy came along and then we're building our house. We're moving from Paran down to Bayside. Um and yeah, it was getting pretty full on. So I um, got some writers in. So it started with Greer Deberg, who's my fashion editor. So right. she writes me a story a week. Um, and now it's at the stage where I've got a travel editor and interiors editor, and then I fill in all the all the awesome. gaps. So it's kind of running itself now. Yeah. Um, and my manager helps out with the commercial side of things. So yep. selling sponsored posts, which I don't really do that much of, um, and um, sidebar advertising. Right. But it's interesting because. You know, the digital landscape is forever changing and you've yeah. got to be nimble and you've, you've got to be flexible with things. Yeah. But I find that um, right now, Instagram is so awesome because it's kind of everything in one. It's Periscope, it's um, the best of Periscope, the best of Snapchat, yeah. the best of YouTube, all in the one app. Yes. And I find that it almost makes... Um, especially with the gallery functions, because my blog's very visual, you can kind of put it all on Instagram. Yeah. I keep the blog there because if you want to write a more in-depth piece about something. You can jump on and do it, yeah. Yeah, or longer videos. Yes. Um, So you need that there, and it's a good platform for me to have. But I find Instagram is so powerful these days, and that's where my biggest audience is. It's huge. um, Yeah. I can kind of reach out to them very quickly um, in a very targeted way. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And your following is, and we often talk about it because we do a radio show together, mm. that whatever you say gets picked up mm. by everywhere. It's like this, it's a, almost a bizarre obsession. Like, you're fucking mm. awesome, but like, <laughs> 
Let's be honest, it's weird. It is weird. It is weird. I've just stopped reading it all. Because yeah. it's like every, whenever I open my mouth, there's some kind of clickbait news story about it. And I'm not sure. Where do you think the obsession comes from though? I have no idea. I have no freaking idea, but it feels like there's just stuff every day. Yeah. And not so much with other people. There's other people every now and again, but I feel whenever I open my mouth, there's a story about it. It's something there. But it yeah. doesn't, the thing is with you is it literally doesn't bother you. You've turned nah. your comments off mainly on Instagram to, so you don't waste time. Yeah. But you are well, very it, Teflon. It's like, ah, uh, yeah. whatever. Yeah. How, I don't get how you are like that though. Because if I wasn't, I couldn't do what I'm doing. No. But often yeah. what you will, will talk about, then they'll just take bits of it too. And it's like, listen to the break because that's not what was actually yeah. said. Yeah. Or... So you and I will talk, we'll do say three segments yep. on the pickup. And then every single segment ends up becoming a clickbait story. And when I say clickbait, I'm not sure if people out there kind of understand what a clickbait story is. Mm. Um, but a clickbait story, for those listening and going, what the hell is she talking about? It's those stories with a really outrageous headline that makes you feel an emotion either really negatively or really positively. Yeah. And it's a real knack that editors have mm. um, to be able to create this, headline that just makes you click on it it's one of those yeah. headlines that you just go oh you know yeah I, I need to read that yeah and it's all just to generate advertising revenue yeah and it's a sad state of affairs i think in the news landscape when clickbait stories is what's yeah. taking over they're not well written no. um they're not well researched um they're usually just pulled off instagram or a segment we've done on radio they are sensationalised, yeah. um, often inaccurate, and they never c- recorrect. Or sometimes I get emails saying, "We're going to write a story about this thing you said on Instagram or this thing you said on th- on the three pm pickup. We need a comment by four pm." And the email's like two o'clock, mm. and you might not get back to them in time. So instead of waiting to see if they get their facts right and then publishing the story, it's like, "Well, you didn't get back to us, so we're just going to run with it." Yeah, and there's no accountability. No. So that's why all of these clickbait stories that I just don't read them because it's all, a lot it's of it is just crap. So if you're listening out yeah. there, guys, all of these clickbait stories, don't be a sucker. If you're no. going to click on it, so, and you know, I admit sometimes I'm a sucker for a clickbait story. And go, yeah. Oh, oh. Yeah. Um, the best thing you can do is actually listen to our show because that is actually listen to our show. Yeah. Yeah. It's Not the paraphrase stuff that yeah. you see on these tabloid sites or even like proper news sites run yeah. clickbait tabloidy stuff I now. I feel like it's getting and worse though. It bet. is getting worse and worse. And yeah. I feel sorry for the really good storytellers, the amazing journalists, the beautiful writers. Mm. I feel like that skill is gonna be a dying skill yeah. and it's not appreciated anymore because these really beautifully well-written stories aren't the ones that are getting the clicks. No. The stories that are getting the clicks are Rebecca Judd slammed for ugly Christmas tree or oh, outrage no. over blah, 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 whatever, some crap that's not even true. They're the ones that are getting the stories. A beautiful run is not getting the clicks. So they're like, oh, well, this clickbait story generated this many clicks, generated this many dollars in yeah. advertising and that beautifully written story that, you know, took weeks for that, journalist to write and yeah. therefore chart like two weeks of wages yeah. for a story that gets no clicks I know. see you later and I I, you can see it these clickbait stories happening more and more and more and it's just a sad side of affairs when it comes to journalism i think that that's I think what people so are too i also on. think it's like people who other people enjoy like we've got you know friends that um end up in these you know, and yourself who end up in these clickbait stories. And it, and it worries me too because I go, don't stop giving yourself mm. because of that. And mm. I know a lot, of, a lot of people I know who have jobs in radio or, you know, their life is sharing about themselves mm. and second guess what they say mm. and do because of these bullshit headlines. Mm. And, then, and then people miss out on the real you. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? I just think, yeah, I, I worry about that sometimes as well. But I think... I think it, the audience just needs to be educated yeah. on what's a clickbait story. And when you read it going, that's crap. Like yeah. I, when I read these stories, I'm like, that is such BS. Look at the writing. Look at, it's just so sensationalized. So I think if the audience know that um, and just kind of just be, think with a critical mind yeah. when you read something. Yeah. And most of the stuff you're reading is, is unfortunately clickbait. So one of your good mates, Nadia, mm. who I love. She's the best. Doesn't own a pair of undies though, or a <laughs> pair of track pants. 
She doesn't want a pair of track pants. I'll send no. her some jagged ones. Oh my god, Sierra, so I said she, to you, I'm going to go into my wardrobe and grab whatever you want. Yeah. No, she said, and her, and did she, she wear gyms? I wear Chris's tracksuit pants all the no, time. No, she doesn't even wear, I'm like, you would have a buffet of track pants because yeah. of what your husband does. Mm. No, she sits there and often she'll sit in her heels and her jeans just watching TV and I'm like, that's really nah, fucked up. Nah, 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 never jeans. It's too, uh, too uncomfortable. Thank you. Yeah. G-strings though. Oh, I'm all over G-strings. Yuck. What? But it's like it's, wearing a watch, right? No, it's so not. So when you first put a watch it's on, like you can feel it. It's like wearing a watch that touches your bum hole. No, That's but, what it but is. But this is, wait for it. So you wear it, you wear a watch. The first time you wear a watch, you can feel it. But then after an hour, you don't feel it. I don't know if that's true. A G-string, you put it on, it's like wearing a watch. You, you go, oh, I can feel that up my butt crack. And then it just disappears. I'm in a G-string right now and I can't feel it. What I can feel is full undies always going up my ass and giving me a wedgie. I have undies on 24-7 unless I'm in the shower. Even really? if I have sex, I just pull them to the side. No, that's not true. I do, do not. <laughs> I do not own a G-string. Why not? I what is just, wrong with you? So I you just, always have a weird undie line on your butt. Always. So you're not doing your butt any favours. If you want that like nice butt shape, you need a laser cut G-string. What I did today was... What's laser cut? What do you laser mean? Laser cut means no um, digging in hair. It's like flat cut. Okay. It's like cut with a laser. So okay. you don't get a, the digging and the bulge. It sits really nice and flat. Maybe mm. I will. No, that's a lie. I definitely won't <laughs> try it. But I, I honestly go, what, that is so uncomfortable. Do you sleep yeah. in a G-string? Nadia sleeps in a G-string? Uh, sometimes, yep. Sometimes. Just sometimes nothing. Sometimes briefs. Whatever. Just what I, whatever I can get my hands on. Whatever's clean. Wow, whatever's but, around. So today I had a G-string on, but I've got, see, this dress is like really like this. It's a little bit windy. Yes. And I went to the Portsea Polo once when I was like when I first moved to Melbourne and it was a really windy day and I had a G-banger on and a dress like this and it kept going and then my bum with my new G-string kept flashing and it actually looked like I was naked. Oh, and it was would so have. bad. So from there, like I was walking oh. around like this all day. So, and I You know what? That's still somebody's story about you. Oh my God, I saw Beck Jard at the polo and, and she had no undies on. <laughs> that is someone's story about you, for sure. It's like really? the girl I, I told say, you. Have you heard something? No, no. I haven't. But it's yeah. like that. I was just telling yes. you about a girl in primary school, one no undies, did a flip on the monkey, the monkey bars. bars. And you've never forgotten it. You're the monkey bar girl. <laughs> well, what I did, so I was, I was like, oh shit, what if it's like windy on the street when I park the car, I've got to walk into your house. And uh, so I just chucked some full briefs over the top, just did in case, you? in just black. Have you got them on now? Yeah, I think so you've like got a double double. Ones. Oh my okay. goodness! Double, yeah, and then there's the laser cut. Oh, you've got to let it breathe more. No, mate. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's also got double undies on today because <laughs> I thought I don't want to be like flashing anyone in my new G banger. That is so <laughs> funny. <laughs> Everyone brings a show and tell, mm-hmm. and I love yours. This is so beautiful. This is, this is my show and tell. So this is. Um, the afternoon we brought um, Tom and Darcy home. You know what I love the most about this? Oscar. Juddie's trackies. Oh, Juddie's trackies. Yeah. Look at them. Like, I could have put on a better pair He's of trackies. such a dad, isn't he? <laughs> Look at them. Even go. <laughs> I love that Billy is standing on her dad's foot like this in her little tutu. Oh, like, she always dresses so herself. Look what she's wearing. Oh, my goodness. Um, we're holding Tom and Darcy and that... Like, we're in this room full and of Oscar's flowers. Everyone sent book. these flowers. Oscar just gets his prop, his book. Of course, he's so studious and so obedient oh. and so amazing. He's going to be a genius, that kid, I tell you. Um, and I just thought, I'm, I'm always the annoying one in the family. My husband always rolls his eyes at me because I'm always like, we need to get a photo of this. This is a good memory. So we got the twins home. I'm like, we need to take a photo. Yeah. While the flowers were still looking semi-fresh. Yeah. Um, on our first afternoon home. With the boys. Look so I set that. That's just on the iPhone and I got a little iPhone tripod at home and I just set it on self-timer and I just did it. And look how proud Juddy looks. Like, I Does love it. Look proud. I think on the inside we're both going, what the fuck? Yeah, seriously. First night at home. <laughs> I hope we survive. I hope everyone survives. Not quite sure.